everyone, it's Angie from Drop Labs. I'm here with DJ Ski of Dash Radio, an entrepreneur, um, someone who's discovered a bunch of artists. Um, I'm sure you, the long list is like very impressive. Um, a few on there. A few on there, as you can see it up above, and a bonafide sneakerhead. I'm here to welcome officially to the Drop Labs fam in our creator series, um, complete with a few pair of shoes. Damn, and, I'm excited. Yeah. Wait, what's this at first? I don't even know what this is. Let's open it and see. Cool. I thought it was just a pair of shoes. I'm going to go backwards. So yeah. we'll open the shoes left. We'll save the best for last. Yeah. But okay. Every millisecond counts. Yes. Very so you true. know when you're gaming. Uh, uh, yeah, that's you know when you board. lined in and like um you play with like, video games. This is that one of the boring. this is one of the coolest use cases for these shoes too. I think is like video games and things that you're not thinking of. Of course music. That's obvious, right? Yeah. But like video games, even meditating, things like that, so you still have to play a game. Oh, these are sick. I love this colorway, too. Yay! Super right. sick. Drop lab socks. So, hold on, our lovely language is socks. Here's the pay to say thing. Oh, I didn't even think of socks. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. All right, now, big moment. Can I do this without doing it right? Yes. This box is sick. I love, you know what's sick, though, before we even get into it, is these little, like, almost the, the sound grooves. Yes. Yeah, it's super sick. So, you probably can't see it on camera, but looks really dope in person. Oh, there we go. This is a killer. This whole packaging is sick. It just feels like it's something very futuristic and next gen. Yeah. There we go. I see him. I finally got him. How many pair of sneakers you got, Dennis? 2,000. No. Yeah, way too many. These are a lot different than everything else I have. I have nothing like it. I mean, the closest would be the Marty McFly's, right? But that's it's different. Yeah. It's not this. So. And then there's also a like, oh, yeah. of secret compartment down there. I would have gone about my day. There's literally a whole secret compartment at the bottom of this. It just hides away. Mm -hmm. How many shoes do you have that have come with chargers? Just Marty McFly ones, right? But it's different. <laughs> but it's different. Yeah. Right. So tell us your thoughts on the initial, like, you know, basically like the feel, weight. I love it. I love that they're clean. I mean, you yeah. can definitely tell there's something in there, but the quality just looks very premium. Like you mm. guys did a really good job. Seen simple, like clean design. It reminds me a lot of like some of the real great Adidas, like modern day designs mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, that kind of, that's the school of thought that I'm getting when I look at it, especially like the woven material, which looks super comfortable, stable on the sides. And, of course, the sound, like mm -hmm. little grooves that you see in the box on the outside to really make it go off. But uh, no, you guys did a really, really good job with the design, especially knowing how much you guys had to, you know, how much room you had to make for the electronics and the tech inside, because it's really a tech product. It's not just a sneaker. Definitely. You couldn't have said it better. So it was very mindfully done, of course, and like we took a lot of care into... The charger is yeah. sick. Mm -hmm. Yep. The guy that lights up. <laughs> It's amazing. All right, what do I do next? How do I okay, put these Okay, let's turn them both on and let's pair it with your phone. Okay. When it starts pulsating blue like that. There you go. Do I need to do it for both of them? Yes. Okay, perfect. See how it's solid now? Money. Okay. We already connected. Okay, so then go into the app, which I think you've downloaded, right? Got it. Okay, so. All right. Okay. They're comfortable, actually. Do I just go to my any music app? Yeah, you can do Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube, whatever you want. Great. Oh, wow. Oh, damn, those things are strong. What so do you guys feel? It feels like the whole like world's <laughs> on it, right? Is there like an earthquake? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, seriously, that's nuts. So we have different settings. I think I should do this last time, but you're that's so sick. velvet, that's... Yeah. You see it's even more bigger than last. I don't remember. Feel, yeah, last for time, sure. But... No, it feels it definitely feels even bigger. Yeah. There you go. Especially if you lift your feet up. Yep. Yeah, I was like, there's more bass for my feet than what I'm hearing, which is crazy. Like, it feels like you're at a concert or something. Yeah. Like you're at a show or in the studio or something. Yeah. It's crazy. You're obviously a professional. You're a DJ. You're in the music scene. You've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. So like, how would you? Yeah. I guess like at a live concert is the best way, but like, is there anything else that you're kind of liking this experience to? I mean, it's like, you're able to now sit at home or sit on the couch, sit in your office and really feel the music. It's not just in the background, it's not something there. It's something you can really engage and mm -hmm. feel and it goes through you. And that's what, what makes music so special, right? And that's why we have these giant subwoofers mm -hmm. and things like that. And this replaces it. That's what you lose a lot of times with headphones, with different things. But even with that, there's not an experience like this where you're, the other side of your body feels it. Usually it's all right here, right? But getting it from the other end is just kind of crazy. Cool. It's a trip. Yeah. Yeah, it's dope. 
I can't believe you guys don't feel it. It feels like the whole like building's like there's an earthquake right now. You guys don't feel that? No. That's wild. There's like yeah. different ones. And then bright, obviously that's on the higher end. Oh, that's yeah. dope. Yeah. So you can now get the treble up instead yeah, of the yeah. bass. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you can tell the different use cases for totally. the different types of music, right? So like totally. it goes in like EDM or hip hop or totally. classical. And then dramatic is for if you're watching something cut down. Yeah, that's dope. And then Tyson. It's like I'm in Jurassic Park right now. Yeah. So I'm like, you feel like the dinosaur, like walking, right? Like, with the water shaking. The gaming mode, too. Mm. That's gonna be clutch for mm. gaming. Like, magic play. That's sick. Do you, is it just casual gaming or do you actually game like. I play. I mean, it's play. casual, but I play. I play. I okay. You. Okay. We have these tournaments that you should enter. I oh, mean, as long as there's not like, <laughs> like real pros yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. but I can hold my own against okay. some other people. Like, I don't know if it's enough time to play, otherwise, it'd be yeah. at you, but not with play. the shoes. You play now I can find everybody because you can feel like again like you can probably feel a lot of those things that are going on in the game and feel people sneaking up on you and mm -hmm. these different moments and things it's just it's gonna give you another advantage like right why would why would you not like if I was a pro gamer I just would wear these there's absolutely no downside if it gives you that little extra edge that could be the difference between winning and losing and seeing somebody so yeah you guys are gonna crush with that <laughs> cool every awesome. gamer out there needs these you really actually feel and hear the music. It's a new experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, you actually hear it and feel it going through you, which is unlike what we're, we're used to, especially yeah. with, with stuff like this, right? So I'm just blown away. It opens up a whole new world of dynamics from a production perspective and all the other use cases too. It kind of takes over your whole body because instead of just getting music through through your head, now you're, you're getting it head and toe and it kind of, makes them match together. And, yeah. and the power on them is crazy. Like you, you feel them right now, like yeah. it's ridiculous. And especially for, for other experiences where you're trying to meditate and be mm -hmm. somewhere peaceful or play a game and get those things, it's it's game changing for those fields. Yeah. So. Can I give you a pro tip? Yeah. So this actually can line into like your soundboard. So when you're oh, DJing, you, click, you just basically um, clip those into your the back. That's sick. And then clip this into like one, you know, there's a splitter. I'm gonna open this up. Hey, right. hey, Do you hey. wanna put it up actually? Let's see it. So, there's a headphone splitter oh, here. Sick. So if you can put, you know, one for the shoe, yeah. one would be for your you know, water headphones if you're spinning yeah. or whatever. And then you would hook that into your um, soundboard. That's so whether dope. It's, yeah, and you can really do feel like all your beats and stuff like that. And That's so you're, super if you're sick. producing with this on, it might give you an extra edge. That's amazing. Um, if you're doing VR. It just gets you in that mood, gets you energized. It's all yeah. about vibe and energy, right? It's yeah. Like, that's what these things give you. It's just a whole other energy. And then these are clips, like for, let's say you are mm -hmm. doing VR and you don't want it to tingle on your Oh, heart. I didn't even think of this. Yeah. I just saw, and you know what? I've been off a lot of the VR stuff because I thought like it didn't have that great of use cases. I saw an incredible example of it last week and this with that. Mm. Oh my God, yeah. I'm, I'm back excited about VR. So these would be killer in that. I'm amazed. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. But they're dope. It's super comfortable too. So I'm okay. gonna go meditate, play some games, do some VR, and uh, you're never gonna see me again. You just make me a whole lot less productive. <laughs> yeah. Or more productive. I'm happy for you guys. Seriously, it's a whole new revolution. There's nothing out like this. And I haven't seen anybody else do this, so it's really, really cool. And you gotta try it for yourself. It's one thing to read about it and stuff, but when you actually do it and see it, mm -hmm. your mind will be blown. <laughs> yes, yes, welcome into the Dash Radio headquarters. I'm DJ Ski. Oh my gosh, such a pro voice, I love it. Done okay. it a couple times, right? <laughs> no, it's really good. <laughs> I yeah, better yeah. be, that's why we're here, that's why we built it, all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, can you tell us a little bit about your come up and just sort of like yeah. walk us through your journey of like how you like built this empire, honestly. Like I'm really, really yeah. impressed with like all the stuff Thank that you've... DJ Ski is just like one subset of like a really massive thing that you felt. We try. I mean, it all yeah. started in, I grew up in Minneapolis. Um, as soon as I got behind the turntables, I knew that that was going to be what I did the rest of my life. Wow. Um, I was always an entrepreneur at heart. So the way I made my money as a kid in high school was selling PlayStations and Xboxes and sneakers to, to people in the entertainment industry. Oh. And ended up getting connected with the CEO of Loud Records, Steve Rifkin. Sent him a letter on what he was doing wrong with his label. When <laughs> I was 16, he loved it so much he offered me a job, so I figured a way to graduate 
graduate high school early, left and packed a U-Haul when I was 17, drove to Los Angeles, and luckily the rest worked out. We had a, had a great run at SRC Records with Akon, Terror Squad, David Banner, a lot of incredible artists. My DJ career took off a little later on, producing for Game, and then Snoop, Kendrick, all the West Coast guys. Um, was lucky enough to be the first really to, to hear and help break people, whether it be Kendrick or Gaga, and, you mm -hmm. know, Post Malone, a lot of these big people. And through that journey, you know, I ended up with a TV show and, you know, launching a business called Dash Radio and still a lot of, a long way, bought a lot of shoes, you know, <laughs> you have a lot of fun. So I'm glad to be here and I've always been into like tech, sneakers, music, and that's why I was so excited when I saw these because it's kind of the, the epicenter of all that. Definitely. What was your advice to, um, like when you were 16, what did you write in that letter? Um, it was all about internet stuff and digital technology. At the time, Napster had just taken over the music industry and I, I just happened to be at the right time at the right place, right? Like Steve didn't even know how to use really email at, the t at that point. Seriously, it was like yeah. a new thing for all of them. And yeah. I was this kid in Minneapolis, like DJing and having like websites and all these things. So I just gave him a bunch of ideas that I thought were obvious, but that only I as a kid in high school would have known. And he wanted that type of insight. So, uh, you know, I was lucky to, and I was lucky that he, he believed and, and understood and, and realized the value of that. So shout out to Steve. Yeah, awesome. Well, I mean, and then how did it become like your personal brand to like something much more like this? So Dash Rate, I know that you're also in, you work with automotive now. Yeah. Can you talk a little more yeah, about so, that? Yeah, so Wes, I was in terrestrial radio. I was on FM radio since the time I was 16 in Minneapolis, uh, starting a small community station, working on my way up to, to being on the biggest station in the country here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Over on that, I was on satellite radio here for, for about a decade. And being in those systems, I just realized that radio and broadcast hadn't shifted from analog to digital and that that change was inevitably coming. So instead of reading about somebody else building a billion dollar company and selling it off one day and being upset and saying, I had that idea first, I was like, let me try to do this and stepped away from everything else that I was doing to, to launch a brand called Dash, really focused on connected cars, smart speakers, and providing a highly curated kind of lean back experience. And now we've grown to you know, become one of the most used app and vehicles. Uh, we have distribution partners all across the globe. We have over 50 different uh, partners that we're distributing Dash for, 80 plus stations, 450 DJs. So um, it's, it's all been coming together and working out. And why Dash? Like why that? Name? Dash because we want to take up the dashboard of your car. That's okay. where people primarily listen to, to music and yeah. we want our product to be that simple where you just have to click play, you don't have to know anything else and it plays and it's we want to be built into everybody's dashboard. So. Okay, and did you like kind of curate that algorithm yourself? It's like based on based your, your we okay. Yeah, we took like a lot of the concepts that, that I'd worked with over the years in radio and then I tried to find that next generation and mm -hmm. all the great DJs and hosts and programmers to, to help us curate those stations because we're really big on looking at data and seeing what works there but then putting that still human touch on it. We don't think there's anything that can replace that. Otherwise, these unique artists that don't have a sound that fits an algorithm will never be discovered and if you end up in a lot of the algorithmically driven radio playlists, it actually gets smaller and smaller over time so we want to be that place that you can just click on a genre and you click on electronic music, you don't have to know anything about it, but you're transported straight to the source with our partner there is Insomniac, so we're broadcasting from EDC and every big festival with the biggest DJs in the world, straight live is this community all in one place, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then um, there's a podcast component to it as well, right? Can yeah, we basically, well, we look at ourselves as like really being, you know, podcasts and us are the same as kind of music. They're on demand. Mm -hmm. It's on demand music files, right? So for us, we focused on creating all this live content. We think there's huge opportunity at the end of the day as we expand the Dash brand where you'll see us syndicating our content to, to videos and to podcasts all across these, these regions. We, we really look at Dash long term being this content creation house where we're able to create these great moments and then spread them through multiple platforms. And have you always done this, um, I guess, all the different verticals? Because I see, yeah. like, even here at the, your headquarters, it's, like, incredible. Obviously, music, yeah. um, recording, there's a gaming component, there's both video and real. Mm -hmm. There's, like, a basketball, like, so it's a sports. basketball court. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Yeah, so, like, how did, like, I mean, this is interesting how it, you really brought all these things together. Yeah. You are you sit at the cross section of actually a lot of like things that Dropbox is trying to reach. Yeah. So like again, video gaming, sports, yeah. music. I mean, meditation, wellness. Yeah. Like you really do sit at the cross section. I mean, do you feel like that's a lot? I mean, those absolutely. I mean, like look, that's what I'm really into, right? Like I, I grew up playing video games, mm -hmm. loving sports, and being obsessed with music. And all those cultures really have a lot to do with each other. Now adding in wellness, which is so important, especially to this next generation. And uh, and for us, we want to be the epicenter of that. We believe 
believe that and from a holistic perspective that people consume content you know in a multitude of ways so we don't want to isolate ourselves and just be radio even though we launch with that as our core product and it'll always be our core products but we want to reach people no matter where they are in all these different sectors whether it's on video whether it's in in-person experiences and events whether it's you know in podcasts whether it's on, in video content and we want to touch all those different intersections and we look at ourselves as kind of being the centerpiece for for culture for anything that people want to discover and giving them direct access to the biggest stars and celebrities and artists in the world do you find that, um, like, how has your, your growth pace been? Because to yeah. accomplish all of that, obviously it can't happen overnight. You're going to just be Definitely spread not, too thin. Right? So like, yeah. Yeah, and for a lot of for us, a lot of it's been waiting on, like, new vehicles to roll off the mm-hmm. lot and, and to be built in because we realize that's the number one place that audio and specifically radio is consumed. So we've had to, like, be patient and, like, getting not only getting the deals done but waiting for consumers' purchasing cycles for them to buy a new vehicle and, and get in there. So it's always a challenge, but we're happy that we've grown to now, like, 12 million users with without spending money on marketing. It's all been organic. And, you know, the bigger distribution and bigger partners that we bring on always gives us bumps. So we're excited about where where it is and the fact that it's happened all kind of organically awesome do you have any kind of like partnership or philosophies that you want to share for us i mean it's always about just doing cool things and thinking of the user first everything Mm -hmm. else will come like we built this product without you know focusing on the monetization and how we make money and people thought we were crazy but we're like hey we've got to prove that there's a market fit for this and pave the boundaries and and at the time when i left people were like why are you leaving the biggest station in the country you're on tv you, you have this this natural path that's kind of written out, like as long as you stay alongside those those steps that your journey's kind of mapped out. But mm-hmm. I didn't want to just do the standard stuff, right? Like I really wanted to pave the way or, or you know do something trying. And I felt like somebody else was gonna come along and disrupt that along mm-hmm. the way as we've seen happen in every other industry. And I didn't want to be a part of that old legacy cycle. So I figured like, look, what's the worst that could happen, you know? Yeah. It doesn't work and, and I go back to it, but luckily it's, it's worked out. And I've always wanted to be kind of ahead of the curve instead of trying to do what others are doing. And I've always tried to, to create my my own paths and introduce new artists that the people weren't playing and you know introduce these new thoughts and processes so it's just kind of natural for everything that I did so my advice out there would be like hey just just go for it and do it and, you know yeah cautious like think of your plans and don't just jump off a building without a, a parachute but figure out the right ways to do it think through it but don't be afraid yeah actually that's really um that's great because we do you like you read my mind, but we do have this one portion where we're like, oh, for the next generation of creative class, like, what would you suggest? And you just hit it right there. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Do, <laughs> <laughs> do you, like, so, you know, obviously you've always been ahead of the curve and like, that's something that takes a lot of skill. Like, do you know what your next step is going to be after this? Um, I mean, you always have ideas and like kind of a roadmap in your head that you, you try to follow, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's taking a little journey, but the end of the day you never know and you have to evolve and adapt to, to whatever kind of presents itself in front of you. Yeah. So, you know, I, if you asked me years ago, I thought that I, I, like something like this didn't even seem possible or didn't even make sense and it wouldn't have existed, but um, here we are. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's been really rewarding to hear about your story. I think from the first time we met, Thank even you, just yeah. hearing you and Susan like just chop it up. Yeah. I was just like a fly on the wall. Like, She's great. We go back yeah. Beats by Dre, like she was the first employee there. So it was crazy to watch, I mean, watch that company grow when we did. We were doing a lot in the music video space mm. and the ski TV space. We, we were the first really with doing all the stuff with Beats and doing all the marketing early on. So it was amazing watching that company grow from nothing to becoming a multi-billion dollar business, you yeah. know? Yeah, awesome.